Hi, my name's Elliot Ball. I'm one of the guys behind Murder Inc, which has been recently nominated at the GQ Food and Drink Awards for Belvedere's Best Bar. However, because of all the stuff going on, I basically had to steal all the booze from Murder Inc. So I'm currently at our sister bar in the East End called the Cocktail Trading Co. We stole their booze because we've been doing a lot of delivery cocktails, takeaway cocktails, and I'm gonna show you guys how to make one of our most popular cocktails, which kind of embodies a lot of the things we've been doing with our delivery drinks, the ultimate mule with Belvedere Pure Vodka. You can either learn to make it yourself or we'll just happily get it straight to you. You guys have probably had a Moscow Mule before, this is kind of an extra, an enhanced expression of it. And rather than fancying it up with specifically different ingredients or additional ingredients, we're kind of just going to take a focus on the way in which you can make drinks simply right. The first thing to go through is actually kind of just what makes things taste good. And I want you to kind of imagine this pyramid. We tend to think in aromas, which is kind of right at the top. You know, those are your strawberries, your vanillas, etc. And then there's also kind of our taste. There's our fundamental sweet and sour, but there's also the general like mouthfeel and satisfaction of a drink. We tend to kind of overemphasize the importance of aroma when without taste and mouthfeel beneath it, none of that stuff really matters. And in bars, particularly with a Moscow Mule, what you often find is you've got a vodka, which isn't fizzy. We're taking citrus or lime, lemon, which hopefully isn't fizzy. We're usually taking some kind of bitters, also not fizzy, and ginger beer, which is the only actually fizzy ingredient. And then by the time we've had all these ingredients at ambient temperature put into a warm glass with ice, by the time that drink lands in front of you, it is nowhere near as effervescent as it should be. So we're gonna kind of hack that. What we're gonna do is take all the ingredients completely flat, and then we're gonna use something like a soda stream to carbonate the lot of them. And what's gonna come out is actually gonna be a lot more rewarding than what you typically get in a cocktail bar. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna chop a little bit of fresh ginger so that we can juice it. You don't need to peel it or anything, which is great because that's, even if you're really good at it, takes absolutely forever. Not everyone is gonna have a centrifugal juicer. That's fine. The good news is they're actually pretty cheap. You can pick up a centrifugal juicer for maybe only 35 pounds or so. Next up is our juicer. This is gonna be a little bit noisy. So we just pop it in. ginger juice. Take a tea strainer and just strain out some of the stuff that's still managed to make it through. We'll pop some of the ginger juice into a cute little jug like this so that we can use it later. You are very welcome to taste this on its own if you want, but it doesn't taste anything like you'd expect it to. It is so, so intense. And next up is our sweet and sour syrup. As I just said, that ginger is delicious, but only once we've kind of seasoned it correctly. What we're gonna make is a large amount of a fundamentally balanced sweet and sour syrup. Now everyone has this idea that we've all got our own personal tastes, you know, some people like it sweet, some people like it sour. There is truth to that. However, nowhere near as much as you'd expect. Most of us are kind of hardwired to be pretty much dead down the center. So that's what we're gonna make. And if you wanna tweak it your own way, you're very welcome to, but maybe give it a try this way first. All we've got in here to begin with is half a kilo of sugar. And I have a freshly boiled kettle from which I'm going to measure out 250 mils once we add these two together, we're gonna to have what we call a two to one sugar syrup. A lot of bars use two to one for a variety of reasons, but one of the handy ones at home is that it's thick, it's syrupy, it's quite easy to work with, it's quite hard to overpour it, but in particular, it tends to last a little bit longer in the fridge. Next thing is the acid. We're taking 15 grams of powdered citric acid. This is available from most of your pharmacies, which thankfully are now back open. What this is gonna do is add that sourness aspect, and it's gonna be pretty much perfectly in balance with the sweetness. We're gonna add a little pinch of salt as well. I know it sounds a bit weird putting salt in drinks, but the thing to bear in mind is that no item of food or drink is best with zero salt. Some things need very, very small amounts, but pretty much everything benefits from a small amount of it, especially cocktails. Add our hot water. I'm gonna flick it off. It's gonna be noisy, obviously. You can see it's really nice and thick and it will clear to be colorful. This is actually just lots of air that's making it cloudy. So we've done most of the work. Now it's pretty simple. We're just gonna put the drink itself together. So a Moscow Mule typically is of course vodka, 
In this case, we're gonna be using Belvedere Pure. We want something that's like quite clean, but also punchy. That's gonna combine nicely with the ingredients, but also give us that kind of that mouthfeel characteristic of a drink with, you know, a good bit of booze to it. Some of the purists would say that a Moscow Mule should feature a Russian vodka, but purists aren't people you want at your party anyway, and the drink is actually arguably American in origin, so I think we're good to use a Polish number. Because we're going to be carbonating this, I'm going to mix it in something that's just nice and easy to use, such as a measuring jug. Also going to use a jigger to measure things out. These are pretty easy to come by. We're going to start with the star of the show, the Belvedere Vodka, and we're going to go with just a little bit under a double of this. I'm going to go with 40 mils, you can always add a little bit more booze later, if you so wish. But also bear in mind that when you carbonate things, all of its aromatic potential increases anyhow. So the general effect of the vodka is actually going to be increased by carbonating it. We're going to add our seasoning syrup. I'm just going to add half of what I did in terms of the booze, just a little bit under a single measure, so say 20 mils or so. And now we're going to add a load of water. I know it feels a little bit weird to be adding lots of water to a cocktail, but when you shake a drink, that is exactly what you're doing. If I hand out a drink which hasn't got quite enough dilution, that's when people tend to say it's too sweet or occasionally too sour. And the correct amount of dilution in a drink is arguably just as important as the actual ingredients you're using. We're gonna add a good amount of water. If you wanna fancy up, you could always use something like a tea or something instead. Rooibos tea actually goes delightfully in this. And I'm gonna add a full 100 mils. I'm gonna add a lot of that to this. And now we're gonna pour it into the vessel that we use for carbonating, this guy over here. Nothing too pretty. A simple plastic bottle. Obviously with you guys at home using a soda stream, just put it into the soda stream bottle. The key thing with soda streams, just to play it extra safe, is to make sure that you don't put them really full. Generally speaking, you don't want them above, say, a third. We're gonna be using a carbonation rig here, partly because it's much quicker and partly because it's kind of cool. So for that to happen, I need to squeeze out as much of the air as I can manage, pop a carbonation cap on top, and then I'm gonna get it really, really cold, such as in an ice bucket where I'm going to leave it for a bit. With carbonating anything, your golden rules are it needs to be as cold as physically possible and it needs to be clear. This is ice cold, it is also clear. So you guys at home are using a soda stream. I'm using something a bit different, a big old gas rig. It is essentially just a giant carbon dioxide cylinder, the same as you'd use for draft beer. We're going to pressurize and carbonate this at about 50 PSI or roughly one bike tire. And I'm gonna charge it and it's going to make a sound. Kind of a funny sound. I'm gonna shake that quickly, I'm gonna let it discharge, and I'm gonna do it again. Another of the great things about soda streams is that should, they do this part for you. I have to do this manually. You guys you can just sit back. Release the pressure. Just to play things extra safe, we didn't add the ginger juice before we carbonated because it's a little bit cloudy. Now we're gonna add our ginger. If you love ginger, add lots of ginger. I would say I like it quite a lot, so I'm gonna add 10 mils. You do not need much. As I said before, this stuff is extraordinarily potent. Gonna give it a little swirl. If you want, you can even pop a straw in and give it a taste now, just to see if you've got the relative levels of balance correct. That's delicious. And now we've got everything all ready. So we're gonna get our glasses, or in my case, just one glass, lockdown, out, and we're gonna pour it out. If you want extra sexy bonus points, get that glass in the freezer, frosted glassware, always looks awesome. Ice is already in there, so we're just gonna give it a little swirl, and we're gonna pour it out. If it's getting really full, do not be tempted to just dump the rest of it in there. When a drink's got a nice window on the top, there's a sense of deliberateness to it. It says to you confidently, this is what you have meant to have in the glass. Whereas when you have a drink that's right full to the brim, it always looks a little bit amateurish. After that, we can garnish it up a little bit. A lot of mules will feature just a little bit of bitters. It's a single splash on the top. Really nice visual, really nice aromatic as well. And then finally, maybe just a little bit of lime. A lot of people would say, of course, that you need lime juice in here. Well, we've got the acidity already, but if people really want that extra hint of sourness, that extra aroma of lime, they've got the option to just fish it out and give it a squeeze. And that is the ultimate mule. You do need some equipment to do this just like that. If, for example, you haven't got the centrifugal juicer, buy one, because they're awesome for smoothies and we've all got lockdown bod right now but you could also probably just maybe buy some ginger juice and that'll probably be fine as well. If you haven't got the blender, 
kind of weird. But you maybe buy some sweet and sour. Hopefully there's some good ones out there. If you haven't got the soda stream, you can just use a little bit of soda. It won't be quite as fizzy, but particularly if you keep that soda and everything else cold, it's still gonna be pretty damn good. And if you have none of those things and no interest in actually making the drinks themselves, I don't blame you. It is locked down. If you fancy just a delicious set of drinks with absolutely no work on your behalf and an opportunity to support us, it's much appreciated. So this guy over here is pretty much identical to that. It is the ultimate mule and we've got a whole range of them available online as well. Thank you very much for watching. That was the ultimate mule with Belvedere Pure Vodka. Cheers. You can't tell because you're watching from home, but that is actually delicious. A real winner.